Let's go ahead and discuss how to use pages in Shortcuts a lot. And let's also talk about the difference between pages and layers and how to use them together. Now in past videos, you're used to seeing me work in this workspace. Now the first thing I'm going to do is bring up a custom workspace that I've created specifically for this tutorial. I laid this workspace out so that I had plenty of room to look at layers as well as my personal library, which I have here. We've got an entire video dedicated to showing you how to create your own custom workspace. So go ahead and check out that video if that's what you want to do. Basically what I've done here is I've put my layers panel here and my personal library panel here. So I'm going to give you a real world example of how you can use pages with layers. In this example, what I'm doing is I'm laying out some animal shapes that I'm going to use in a scrapbook page. Now using the personal library window here, I'm going to navigate to the folder that contains the files that I want to use in the scrapbook layout. In this case, I'm going to use a set called Cuddly Animals from svgcuts.com. And I'm going to cut a beaver, a bunny, and a cow for my scrapbook layout. I'm going to place each of these animals on a separate page. And as you'll notice here, each animal has multiple layers. Okay, and I'll show you how I'm going to arrange that. And as you can see here, each animal is comprised of multiple layers. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a page for the beaver. Okay, and the first thing I want to do is I want to take, and instead of it saying page one, I want to label it so that it says beaver. Okay, there's a couple ways of doing this. One is you can go over here under the properties option here. And you see where it says page one, you can just type beaver, okay, and you can hit enter. And there you go, you can see that the name is now beaver. You can also change the color. This is just for color coordinating, just to kind of help you identify it quickly based on a color. You can also use it for other things like grouping similar pages together based on color. Okay, but I'm going to make this brown because our beaver is going to be brown. Okay, and there we go. Now also, you can go under Page, and you can click on Page Properties, and you can do the same thing there. Okay, so there's a couple ways of doing this. So now that we have the page, I'm just going to go ahead and create the next page, just to show you. I can go under Page and click Add Page here, or I can click on this option here and click Add Page. Okay, now Page 2 is going to be my bunny. So I'm going to call it Bunny, and when I think Bunny, I think Pink for some reason. Okay, so I hit OK. And there's the page for the bunny. Okay, I'm going to do one more page for the cow. So I'm going to type cow. And cows, I'm going to, put, I'm going to make it black. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we've got a page for the cow, a page for the bunny, and a page for the beaver. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the beaver folder here that contains the SVG files that will make up the beaver. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one. And I'm not going to resize it because these files are already sized for me. Okay, so now as you can see, when I placed the SVG file on the mat under layers here, it added an entry for it or it created a layer for it. Okay, so I can actually lock it or unlock it. I can also hide it or show it by clicking this button. We've got an entire video dedicated to layers. So if you want to learn more about layers, go ahead and check out that video. Okay, so we've got that one there. Now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to add the eyes. Okay, so we've got the eyes there. And I'm going to add the tail and the rest of the body parts. So I'm just going to put those here. And then the teeth. Okay, so there's the teeth. Okay, so we've got all the shapes and we've got them all on the beaver page. Now I'm going to go under bunny and I'm going to browse and locate the bunny parts. Okay, there he is. There's the bunny. Okay, there's his eyes, and here's the rest of his body parts. And now I'm going to go under cow. I'm going to browse to the cow section, and I'm going to click on the first part, place it on my mat. Okay, I'm going to click on the nose and the belly, and the rest of the cow here. Okay, so now you'll notice that when I click on this beaver page, and I want you to focus your attention on this layers panel here. When I click on the beaver page, the layers panel changes, okay? The layers panel displays the layers that are currently on this page. So for example, this one here 
is that. Okay, so I can turn that off or on. So just to give you an example on why you would use pages and layers, let's say that you're working on a handful of scrapbook layouts and you need to cut these shapes out multiple times and you want to make sure that they stay consistent. Creating pages allows you to place your elements, size them, and then keep them there in case you want to go back and cut them again without having to resize them again. And this means that you can save these settings and use them again on another day or next year or whenever you want. And you can do that by clicking File and clicking Save Project As. And I'm going to call this Animal Layout just to show you and click Save. I'm saving it to my desktop. I'm going to close shortcuts a lot and I'm going to reopen it. Let's say it's two months later. We can go to File. We can go to Open Project. When it comes up, you see the cow page, the bunny page, and the beaver page. Okay, I'm going to bring up my personal library window again. All right, so now let's talk about layers and how to use them in conjunction with pages. Now let's say you're getting ready to cut the beaver. Each layer is going to be cut out of a different colored paper. So you don't want all of them to cut at the same time. So what you can do is you can turn off the ones that you don't want to cut. And as you can see here, they're color coordinated. Okay, so the blue ones here are the eyes. We can turn that off. The teeth and the tail and the rest of the body there, we've turned those off. Now we haven't deleted them, we've just turned them off. So we can go ahead and we can take a look at our preview. Okay, now also if you want, you can click on view and go to show outlines so you can kind of see what it will actually look like when you cut it out of paper. Okay, and we can click preview here and there you go that's what it's going to cut now when we're done cutting that we can bring up the next part so we're going to hide that layer and we're going to bring up the eyes okay so there's the eyes and we can go to cutter and we can cut the design okay so now we can hide the eyes and bring up this piece and you can move these wherever you want it doesn't matter if they're overlapping with say this piece here as long as only one of them is visible that's the only layer that your cutting machine is going to cut so we can go ahead and preview that and we can actually go ahead and cut that design as well now while we're in the cutter menu I just want to point out here that you can also adjust your mat size in here change it to 12 by 12 or 12 by 6 24 by 12 you can also use the multi cut function now let's say for example that you're cutting these out of a thick vinyl or some type of material that may require more than one cut. Okay, the multi-cut, you can set it to two times, three times, or four times. Basically it tells your cutting machine to cut it more than once without you having to click cut again. Okay, so it'll just go over the same lines twice, three times, or four times depending on how you set it. Okay, so also this cut design button here does the same thing as this button here. And then I think the most important part of the cutter menu is this preview option. Okay, when we click the preview option, the mat will actually show us what it's going to cut. It shows the lines that it's going to cut. And I'll show you why this is really important, okay? Let me click on this. And as a rule of thumb, you wanna make sure that anything that's on your mat is within these tiny dotted lines here. Okay, now watch. If I take this and I have any part of it overlapping these little dotted lines, watch what happens when I click the preview button. Okay, you see how it gets caught off there? You want to make sure that before you cut anything that you preview and make sure that everything is within the boundaries for cutting. Otherwise, you're going to end up wasting a lot of paper. Okay, so we'll click here, we'll move it, we'll make sure that it's within these lines and then we'll click preview. Okay, there you go. And you can do that under cutter, you can click preview there as well. Also, let's say that you've laid out shapes on five or six pages, in this case three pages, and you've got multiple layers, and before you start cutting, you just wanna make sure that everything is within the boundary. Okay, there's a quick way of doing that as well. You can click preview all, and there you go. It'll actually show you all of the layers on all of the pages, and they'll show you where they're going to be cut, okay? You can also do that under the cutter menu by clicking preview all. Okay, now one other tidbit I want to show you here 
is we can go under bunny or we can go under beaver, it doesn't matter which layer. I can bring these all back up here. Okay, I'm going to move this one over. Now we're looking at this with the show outlines option unchecked. If we check this, it shows the outlines. But if we uncheck it, we can actually see a fill for each shape, okay? Now what we can do is you can actually change the color of the fill as well by highlighting each element one at a time. You scroll down under the properties window here, okay? And you can see that there's a color option here. If you click on that, it brings up this window where you can select a different color. Okay, I'll hit OK, and there you go, you can see that. And now you'll notice that it has a green outline. Well, you can change the outline in the Layers panel, okay? This one that I have selected here is the dark brown SVG layer. You can tell that by just hiding or showing it. And you can see that the outline is green. I can double click this, and I can change that to another brown and then click OK, and there you go, OK? So you don't have to do that, but if you really want to color coordinate things or change the colors of things, you really have a lot of control over that. Another thing I want to show you as far as the pages go is by clicking on this X here, you can delete the page, and it'll come up and ask you, are you sure you want to delete the page cow? I can hit yes. Also, as long as you have a page selected, you can go under page and you can delete the page there or you can delete the page here. Okay, it does the same thing. So I'm going to delete the page, yes. Okay, and finally, I just want to show you that you can actually take layers and move them across pages, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new page, and I'll just call it Beaver2, and hit OK. And now, under the main Beaver page, I'm going to highlight one of these elements. I'm going to highlight this one, and it's called dark brown SVG. Okay, and I'm also going to make sure that it's highlighted here. Okay, and what I can do is I can go under layer and I can send layer to page. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. And as you can see here, I have dark underscore brown dot SVG selected and I can send it to page Beaver 2. Okay, you can't send it to the same page. That's why Beaver is not available here, but I can move it to Beaver 2 and click OK. All right, so it's gone, and if I click on Beaver 2, there it is. Okay, so this allows you to move elements between pages. Just remember that you don't have to use pages or layers, and remember that there's no right or wrong way to use these. If you're using shortcuts a lot to cut a few simple shapes here and there, you may not want to use pages or layers, but eventually, when you become more comfortable with the software, and you want to start saving your work so that you can use it again in the future. And you want to help lay out your ideas in a more organized manner. You can start using pages and layers to make your workflow that much easier.